it said that, so that means I have access. No, so Sheetal, last time also when Benat and all of them were talking, we recorded, but we didn't get the recording because you have to ask Srini. Yeah, yeah, you... I did. And uh, what I wanted was them to connect it to the flyer. So oh, okay. that next time we know which recording we want or else there's going to be so many like <laughs> faceless recordings. So I was waiting on Lakshmi Kant to get back to me, but I will be on him on top of this task. Yeah, because... cloud is better because even if it's more than an hour, we have all the data there. So yeah, 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 yeah. I'll do that. So, um, so uh, going down the list quickly, she uh, Suda, water check, reduced portion size, great. Breakfast is better than before. What about um? So the movement is more in the negative, right? Yeah. So movement, okay, we'll address that later. And then I'm sure weights is also negative. Okay. okay. A food is big. I want you guys to realize that. Hydration and food is big. Like I've said before, people can be working out and still not, you know, change at yeah. all. Um, okay, so Dr. Bhairavi will be joining soon. I told her 20 minutes so that we have more time together. And we can ask, actually, if anybody can text Arunaka any of her questions she wants. For sure, it's gallbladder and homeopathy and any other. Um, and I was doing the six-phase meditation every day morning, Shita. Perfect, six-phase. That These are like the... the this is um, yeah. because I know once I get up, I'll be rushing into things. So I'm doing it uh, in the bed. I okay. don't know if that's a good idea or not, but no, no, it's perfect. In fact, Swami said, "Don't even get out of the bed." He says, "Like start with the eleven seconds." Eleven seconds is what he says, or seventeen seconds. I forget. I think Swami said eleven. Yeah, it is eleven. So yeah. one more thing, she told that nine phase thing is amazing. The way he says, nine phase. Yeah, <laughs> six phase. We love the recipe no. people. We love to grade the recipe <laughs> all the time. I know. I was thinking, no. you know, did I miss something? Three more phases? <laughs> no, no, no. This is the same thing that uh, she sent the video, right? So it's really yeah, yeah. good. Really good. It takes twenty one minutes, I believe. Hey, but... Arman. Yes, it takes twenty one minutes. But I love that you know the beat. Yeah. it's all the alpha uh, waves and later on there's also like I told you about the five different brain waves mm -hmm. so if you can you look even on YouTube like in the past without knowing all of this stuff right I found I don't know how I came across this biurnal beats that's what it's called I don't even know what it is but it seems so good that that's all I put in the background to when I do kriya or meditation or anything and it just sent me to another thing. So now when I'm listening to all these things, it's almost like you are inspired and you walk in a path and then you see science and then you see these people. So it's not like Vishen is a meditation teacher. He started off as a meditation teacher, but he's uh, very successful in the materialistic world, right? So we are actually learning from people who are not saying, okay, go under a tree, go to Kashi, give up everything, you know? Um, sacrifice service we are coming from that background so that's amazing but for us to combine it with ihamu and paramu to me that's what i'm like we are belonging to the world we are you know you're running a business we're working we're dealing with challenges at work so i love that he took it and he made it more available for us it's like more bio available meditations for us you know so when I do the fasting, like I was listening to Ron on the other day and he gives such a good funda. Okay, what is she saying? This is Dr. Bhairavi. Hello, I haven't received the link. Really? Oh, I told her join the link and I forgot to send her the link. <laughs> um, yeah, I have so much to talk to you about. Okay. Um, that... I hear the science behind what we've been told by Swami, by parents, by our ancient gurus. I love hearing the science and I love how to how we can apply it on an everyday, day to day, you know. So she's going to join soon. This is Dr. Bhairavi Kothari. Oh, wow. She has the image of uh, Jason McLennan. 
Okay. You'll have to explain that. Hi, Dr. Bhairavi. How are you? Hi, good evening. I'm fine. Hi. Uh, thank you so much for joining on a short notice. No problem. Yeah, so these are um, very loving, um, uh, healthy souls. So that's Sudha over there. Hi, Sudha. And Saila Jaka on this side. And Deepa and Hello. Sukita. And we have a couple more people, but uh, we're hoping they'll join soon. Yeah, sure. Um, and Dr. Bhairavi um, is a homeopathic doctor. And she was a very good yoga instructor and friend and philosopher for my parents for a while in Mumbai. That's how I know her. And it's very uh, kind of you, Dr. Bhairavi, to join. Would you like to introduce yourself, please? And this is yeah. being recorded, right? Yeah, so this is being recorded. Okay. So I'm Dr. Bhairavi Kothari. I'm basically from Mumbai. At the moment, I am at Gujarat. Um, and I am a homeopath, come a yoga trainer, come a yoga therapist, uh, and presently I, um, uh, connection. I have started teaching, so uh, I am a professor and a uh, sorry, Dr. Bhairavi, is it me or is it you? Because it's, uh, connection is not, we can't hear you properly. One it... minute, I'm just trying to shift to another Wi-Fi if possible. Give me a moment. Could be some bandwidth issue. One sec. Hello? Yes, I think it's better now. It's better now? Yeah. yeah. Good evening, everybody. I'm Dr. Bhairavi. I basically... Uh-oh. Sheetal, um, I think uh, the video is affecting her probably because when we are on video, it has to stream hers also with Raven. Shall we stop our video? You stay on it. Some of us will go off and come in. That might be better. Okay. You stay on because if we all are there, it's yeah. really more fast over. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, hello, Dr. Bhairavi. Can you hear me? Oh, you don't think it's her. She's she's still on though. Yeah, she just came back on again. Hello. Oh. Yeah. So Dr. Bhairavi, they think Can you, could you get my last conversation? No, because you paused and then um, no or anything. So what everybody's gonna be off video except for me and see if that helps. But even though it could be just your connection. Okay. You want me to you want me to switch off my video as well? No, 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 no. Like let's try with you and no, me no. only and everybody else is off. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I I am right now in a place where the connection could be slightly a challenge. Yeah. Um, there so maybe it's it's a router or something. Yeah, I, I have, uh, I mean, I've tried to connect with the router, but it's not, uh, okay. it's not really working. I think there is some issue. Okay. Uh, anyway, so I was, I was telling that uh, I'm basically from Mumbai, but recently I've shifted to Gujarat where I'm teaching in a college, uh, in a homeopathic college. And uh, I'm 
uh, like I said, I am a homeopath and I have done my courses in yoga therapy and yoga teachers training. So that is about my introduction. Oh, very nice. So um, what we are all interested in is how does diet hmm. and movement and yoga contribute, even though we all are aware that all of this is good stuff, we want to know hmm. if there is any specific and basic guidelines that can help us. Because, diet. Uh, yeah, could, you, could you repeat because I lost you in between. Yeah, so basically any wisdom you can share on diet and movement and yoga, of course. Yeah, um, sure. the, 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 what I was saying also is that we already know that this is all good stuff, but when it comes to practice, it's a challenge. And for me, I also have this understanding that yoga is ashtanga. So when we say yoga, most of the time, people think it's asana. When they say yoga class, it means asana oh. class. So we forget that the yama okay. and niyama come before the asana. So which is what our group is all about, yama and niyama, you know, our personal discipline, our habits, our rituals. That's where our focus is before we even talk about weight loss. So yeah, any wisdom you can share on that, it's uh, very appreciated. Okay, sure. So basically, yog, uh, the yog terminology is derived from a Sanskrit word, which means yuj. Yuj means to unite or to bind or a union. So here, the entire... Um, um, entire focus of yoga is to unite two things and which are those two things or three things it is the soul consciousness with the supreme consciousness nice so that is the final goal of yoga uh, and there have been different ways through which one can achieve that union so okay. ashtang yoga, what you said, is one um, is it was compiled by Maharshi Patanjali, who uh, yoga was there even prior to him, but he compiled it into eight steps, which could help a common man mm -hmm. to achieve that union. So that is what you were speaking about, yam. Niyam, Asan, Pranayam, Pratyahar, Dharna, Dhyan, and So, uh, Asan is one step of it. Pranayam is one step of it. But, uh, and if we go to uh, Bhagavad Gita, it says, Samatvam Yoga Uchate, mm. which means a balance. So, the entire aim of yoga is also a balance. So, when we talk about weight, when do we uh, generally gain weight? When there is something that is not in balance. Yes. And here we have to bring back that balance. And like we said, there, there are uh, techniques and um, there are ways to re reach that state of balance. Yes. And that state of balance here can be achieved through a balanced diet, ahar, and of course movement. Because um, again, uh, the the aim of yoga is to reach a state of ultimate balance and union. But through how would we reach there? For that, we need a flexible body, a flexible spine. And to achieve that flexible spine and flexible body, we need to uh, do what, uh, what we call as hat yoga. Hat yoga is yet another way of uh, practicing yoga. Hat yoga is where they balance the Surya and the Chandra Nadi, the right and the left, the Ida and the Pingla. So we have a right brain and a left brain when we say there is one side of us which is logical, one side of us that is creative. So Hatha Yoga is to balance those. Mm. And in Hatha Yoga, we come across all these asanas, pranayamas, kriyas. 
so when we do yog uh, i mean when we when we practice asanas uh, it it helps us, us to have a more agile body so that that is the role of movement i mean we can do it through surya namaskar or we could do it through different other practices the asanas and uh, everything uh, and pranayams of course they they are at a more subtle level and they uh, if we talk about the gross body i mean from the uh, from the scientific perspective they help us improve our metabolism these asanas and pranayams and kriyas cleanse our system through Uh, with all the impurities that are there they get cleansed through the kriyas so that is how um, yog is going to help you yogic movements uh, would help in achieving a balance at the level uh, of the body and uh, and even the endocrines will come in balance the endocrine functioning which is the hormones which we call the hormones they will also start coming into balance once we start practicing yoga as it is supposed to be practiced yeah that's actually um what i love the focus on uh, yoga is that we we think it's a gymnastics we think it's um the flexibility that you talked about the vest i mean i credit the vest for bringing out yoga into the mainstream and to not make it into some esoteric um weird thing which is what it was in the past but at the same time it becomes same as like flexibility which is gymnastics is also flexibility right but the subtle part of it that you're talking about is flexibility of mind it's the balancing and when we can't take that into the subtle body the gross yoga asanas into the essence of it we lose it we just make it into just another exercise yeah so from where i learned yoga uh, primarily my first yoga training happened they tell us to incorporate bhavas bhavas means to incorporate subtle emotions while you practice yoga asanas why or for that matter even pranayams or kriyas because when you get into that bhav it is i mean we are all emotional beings when we get into that bhav it makes it much more uh, deeper the practice becomes much more deeper and meaningful so if i may uh, speak about those four bhavs uh, bhavas so they say there is gyan bhav uh, sorry there is dharma bhav dharma here doesn't mean religion it means duty so your duty that you are doing when you, you when you practice asan whom are you doing the duty towards first duty you are performing towards is yourself first person you are performing it towards your own self to improve your own state of body and mind so start with that thing that okay i am this is the time that i am dedicating for myself that discipline comes in that uh now i am going to do something which is going to be good for me and if it is going to be good for me it is going to be eventually good for everyone around and then second once you get into that dharma bhav the next is gyan so gyan is knowledge focus or concentration so next level of bhav is that so when you do pranayams and kriyas they fall mostly into gyan bhav they will improve at the end of it you will have a improved focus or an improved concentration third is vairagya bhav now i have achieved knowledge but the next thing is that i may develop an ego so to avoid that from happening i have to surrender and that surrender is vairagya detachment to what i have done and last bhav bhav is aishwarya so after i finish uh, i mean i have done vairagya the next thing that comes in me that builds up as a result is self esteem one step leads to the other so when we do back bending asans for example i mean you would know what would be forward forward bending would be more into vairagya bhav and when we do back bending it would be more of self esteem when you when you raised yourself up so uh, it it gives much more to the practice than just 
a, a physical um, uh, dimension. It is much more. I so, love it. Uh, since yeah. we that point, Go I thought I should share it. Sorry, what was your last line? So I said I shared this because uh, we came to that point where we were talking about various things. I mean, it is not just at the level of body. It is, it is much beyond that we try and connect through yoga. Correct. And I love this insight. And I think it's new for all of us, even though it's very intuitive. Like, So what would be the self-discipline, dharma, bhava, asanas that we could do? And also, could I request your camera to be tilted a bit down so that we see more of you than the ceiling? Yeah, thank you so much. Okay. So uh, dharma, bhava, asanas are more of Oh no, the connection is affected. Right uh, I mean, you can you can start by standing and just again. Is it connected now? Yeah, now it's again better. Okay, yeah. So dharm bhav asans can be done in any meditative postures, like padmasan, like sukhasan, like vajrasan, where you can sit for a while and just contemplate. Okay. And then the Gyan one would be Pranayama. Gyan bhavs, uh, Gyan bhav asanas are balancing. Yeah. Say for example, you are balancing yourself on the toes and you are doing it through a coordinated movement. Actually, all asanas will have all bhavs, but predominantly uh, you will have Gyan bhav when you are doing a balancing asana, supposing. Or when you are doing... Uh, doing a pranayama or kriya it is more of gyan bhav when you are doing candle gazing for example it is more of focus concentration so it is gyan bhav yeah that's perfect and um i think this is that awareness that i love that is 90 percent missing um uh, my puppy is active he just came back from what said <laughs> Um, and I love how you said the power. I heard about him. Sorry. Sorry. I, I heard about. Him. Oh, you heard about Govinda? I think he's going crazy happy. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and this is how, in fact, our health journey we're doing because it's not about the result; it's about. Um, the feeling, the identity. So if I'm doing forward bending and I'm just like thinking about my office or my something or, okay, I'm doing this because I want to lose weight, I want to lose weight or I want to be healthy. You know, the concept is missing in such a way that even if there is a benefit from forward bending physically, it seems um, fleeting. The benefits doesn't seem to last because the glue is not there. And for me, the glue is the feeling. The glue is that uh, bhava you're talking about. And to actually go to that vairagya bhava with forward bending, when people go through trauma, one of the things I learned is that they, um, when, when the grief hits them and you can't like meditate it away and you can't, you want to cry. You have to cry. You are going through this intense trauma right so you can't just resist it because it becomes even more so one of the things they recommend is go into the child's pose like fall at your feet fall you know the sharanagati like where you're completely surrendering and and let the emotions flush through you i do whatever yeah flow through you so that just like with the fever right you drink a lot of water and the fever goes through the system like it's faster it, it, it does what it needs to do and you're actually stronger because of that after that and so I love the concept of surrender it's not about giving up it's about surrendering to that moment of darkness where it can it can actually go through you you know and get flushed out and that uh, you know uh, the forward bending vairagya detachment from ego from problems are you there Dr. Bhairavi I see that 
I see that you're stuck. So I'm gonna wait for her. And so yeah, I love I love this. All I knew was she was helping mom and dad because my brother and Shamili uh, introduced Dr. Pairavi to my parents, but I, I didn't know anything. And I love the, the behind the scenes uh, funda that she's giving us. Yeah. I'm sorry, there was some. Um, yeah, no problem. I mean, I just lost the. No problem. So for a specific, uh, so when you actually talk about imbalance, right? Imbalance is why we have whatever we have, whether it is um, weight gain or disease in the body or anxiety in the mind, everything is part of imbalance. So what would be like, um, how can we approach yoga in a way that, okay, I'm gonna do one hour today yoga or every day I'm gonna do stretch or every other day I'm gonna do, you know, instead of coming up with it from outside external view, what would you suggest? The simplest, um, I mean, say for example, you can't do anything else. You don't have much time. Um, the simplest thing would be to start observing your breath. I love that. Just your attention back to the breath. Um, I mean, this is just a small uh, tip that you can do mm -hmm. when anxious. Check your breath. Your connection is a bit slow. Go back to your breath. When angry, go back to your breath. And you're with the network. Hello. Yeah, your Hello. connection is a bit yeah. slow. I'm, I'm, in a, I'm in a small village right now. No, not a village, but a very small town. So that makes the connection yeah, yeah. a little bit of Not a yeah. problem at all. Just letting me know so you can repeat it. I because no we are yeah. very grateful for you for joining us. So uh, by getting back to the breath, what happens is, is we are becoming mindful again. Uh, say there is something that has made you anxious. Just start watching your breath. And uh, Suddenly you will become mindful. Okay, things are okay. Let me breathe. You know, that is, that is one thing that can happen. If you ask me specifically for weight loss, um, uh, depending on, of course, what is your health status? What is the health status of the practitioner? One thing that I could suggest is uh, some rounds of, sun salutations, few rounds of sun salutations when you get up in the morning. But of course, if it permits, if your body permits it, of course, it has to be uh, different for different people. Um, now, if a person is hypertensive, they have to go slow and not do many of them. If there is somebody who has diabetes, they have to do more of sun salutations or obesity. They can do more sun salutations. Uh, similarly, uh, certain breathing uh, techniques or uh, pranayams are not actually breathing. They are something related to um, control of the subtle energies that we have. So Kapal uh, Bhati, Bhastrika, Ujjayi are supposed to help in balancing the metabolism of the body. but Again, one has to be careful uh, if there is somebody who has a high blood pressure or a heart problem, they should not be doing uh, most of those practices like Kapalbhati and Bhastrika are too, uh, too much of a strain for the heart. So they should avoid doing it. So again, it would depend from person to person, from, uh, uh, from condition to condition. Yeah. disease condition to condition, but this is something that I can say at a very generic and general level that these are the practices that help because um, if we are talking about 
uh, bringing the body weight back to balance these are some of uh, first of all uh, the uh, sun salutations would help uh, because they they are like um, something like an aerobic exercise or something like uh, uh, cardiovascular activity that we are giving uh, them and uh, kapal bhati and uh, ujjayi and bhastrika are supposed to trigger the uh, the metabolism in our body so again they can help so for so people with high bp or bp issues um, high bp yeah mm -hmm. so you were saying ujjayi which is actually uh, very similar very close to that observe your breath because i i know that when we are like for example in an interview room or we know we're gonna meet with someone who is stressing us out naturally we start you know the body starts breathing more but to do that with consciousness and to me ujjayi is like darth with our breath like where mm -hmm yeah right so that's what you're saying practice conscious breath is ujjayi breath right no conscious breathing is something i, I don't know if uh, anybody here is familiar with vipassana but there is a technique in vipassana called anapan where your focus is just on your nostrils and you are just observing the flowing in and out of your breath Okay, so it's actually quite simple. And I know my mom mentioned that where your focus yeah. is actually at the tip of your nose and yeah. it is so much of practicing in the now. It is like, there can be more now. It's not like focus yeah. on your breath can be very vague, yeah. but this is actually telling us where to put the attention on the body. Yes. Okay. Yes. So it's called Anapan. It is called Anapan in Vipassana. I am not it's Vipassana. A going and coming, right? Anapan. Yeah, Anapan. Okay, so that's one. And for BP, I'm curious, can people walk a lot or can they walk in a way? They can walk for a few minutes, say 30 minutes, 20 minutes or 30 minutes, how much ever it permits. Walk is okay. But uh, inversions uh, are not allowed. Uh, very fast sun salutations and to being too aggressive with them is not allowed okay so uh, what if they're doing weights and walking too fast and walking too long at one stretch anything that elevates the heartbeat is not good yes okay and it will also increase the blood pressure no? during that time the blood vessels will constrict and so uh, for be for blood pressure, uh, uh, you go for techniques which would be more slightly towards relaxing for the body. Mm. Like uh, you can you can do full body relaxation, progressive relaxation, savasan, yeah. or you can you can go for uh, alternate nostril breathing without holding the breath or without oh. suspending. Okay, no. Even Ujjayi can be done for blood pressure, but no, not hold without holding the breath. Got it. Okay. In the breath inside, it can produce a strain on the heart. And what will cause gallbladder to like not work? Because I hear that a lot these days. So one is obesity itself is one of the reasons why gallbladder becomes sluggish. Uh, many obese people do not have. Secondly, it's even the kind of lifestyle that we are leading. We are eating junk food and everything. So uh, those, those are cert certain reasons where gall bladder uh, is not contracting enough or there is sluggishness of the gall bladder or there are uh, formation of stones in the gall bladder that way. Okay. So a lot of fat it is associated with a lot of fatty and junk food. Also, a lot of fat. Okay, um, and, uh, and, junk food. and junk food. So, what can we do um, specifically for gallbladder? So um, now, again, it would depend on what exactly, um, what stage of problem one is having. 
say for example there is a gallbladder which is completely become shrunken and uh, uh, there are i mean or a gallbladder where the stone has gone and lodged somewhere at a weird place then best thing to go for is a surgery yeah yeah so this is more for like when it's causing trouble prevention. but not surgery so prevention would be to eat a more healthy and balanced diet like uh, we have spoken of the ahar so basically in yog the ahar is more of sattvic ahar mm. and here in india for us mostly sattvic ahar is something which is composed more of carbohydrates because they are easily digestible yeah but we also have a bad effect of that like here people have a tendency to Uh, get i mean develop diabetes or whatever because proteins are also essential yes so uh, i think a, a healthy balanced diet and drinking having a good intake of water and good uh, exercise routine say daily you give about 40 minutes to an hour of exercise Hmm. i think that should that should be a good enough uh, um <clears throat> kind of a regime for the overall health of the body gallbladder included perfect actually that's exactly the journey that we're on but what i love to hear is that i think not having a balance is not a good thing especially for bp or for any of that like because in the west there is consciousness um with uh, salads and not too much carbs even though america is one of the sickest countries in the world and i think india is competing it with it uh, in obesity in bp and diabetes so we belong to both countries and we have it very difficult because when we take a break from america we're in india <laughs> yes and it's carbs 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 um um yeah so in america it's more about intensity in exercise they like you know the the bikram yoga where the heat is like 90 okay. fahrenheit or something uh it, it's about you need to sweat so much you need to suffer so much and then you feel good so they can't even do yoga properly they need high uh, music they need uh, beats you know they cannot separate dance and rajasik and tamasik with the uh, sattvic correct so your uh, the actual concept of yoga is complete opposite of it it says only give a little challenge to your body but don't challenge it uh, like don't get it to the level where your body will hurt yes and this is exactly what again i feel like is missing because there is this go 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 you know don't stop till you get the goal and um there is this push and there is this agitation inside so outside the bodies could eventually be perfect because they they crushed it in the gym and they were careful extremely you know uh, austere with their food but when the when that but that's an imbalance that's an imbalance to hit it so hard because now so research, many... yeah research is coming out that excessive exercise is causing hormonal imbalance and the disease uh, is coming faster the longevity is actually reducing because of that um that nature to like by any <laughs> he is crying if i put him down if but if i'm here he's in front of me so um, sheetal i know uh, dr bhairavi you mentioned about the diabetes side of it right like do you can you be very specific like what the things that we should do other than the diet portion and exercise portion like especially in the yogic side of it or um, you know pranayama things like that i know you talked about basrika and then uh, um um but so you said certain all... asanas are good certain asanas are good for diabetes um uh, especially the ones where your spine can twist if you know about ardhamachi indrasan uh -huh. if you know about chavangasan or halasan 
they are good because they somewhere uh, give some pressure to the pancreas okay. in diabetes it is the pancreas which is affected to quite an extent so halasan so, uh, ardhachandrasan which one is the other one dr bairavi i said halasan i mentioned about uh, uh, sarvangasan ardha matsendrasan which is a twisting posture ardha matsendrasan and then i mentioned about sarvangasan you can also go for uh, dhanurasan because all these provide some pressure on the pancreas and it helps the pancreas become uh, more stimulated there is a massaging effect on the pancreas thank you thank you very much welcome and uh, yes, when i yes please go ahead no i thought you were saying something um yeah so when i was in the yoga ashram in kaivalya dharma dr uh, tiwari ji he's like the head and he's like in his 80s and doing well so when i asked him what's the takeaway for people who cannot do an hour but they still want to be part of the yogic lifestyle somehow incorporate what he said was uh make sure you do and that's what he does now because he at his age um he does the four different types of asana so he does one forward bending one backward bending one twist and one balance so if we can think of yoga that way as in like in you know 360 degrees because for me it's all about if i think of anything as mount himalayas and now i i have to start doing yoga and and i have this goal to cure, cure diabetes and it may last a while and then stop so for me the tiny shifts towards a healthy lifestyle where i think of yoga as four different um yeah that is a very good concept actually because rather than going for big chunks go for small bite size chunks it is easier for you also it's easier for you to think also yeah. to do to get that much time to do it is easier to implement and you are doing something every day every day and uh is doable exactly because even in the yoga place even though people were there uh because they had diabetes because they had obesity and because the doctor said now go do something right i could see that when the identity is in shifted when we don't feel like oh i do yoga every day and it could be 5 minutes but my identity is that i practice yoga i'm a yoga practitioner but if i don't have that i feel like i am being told convinced by the doctor or by the disease or by my situation and i'm going to put myself through this intense rigorous stuff and it doesn't last because motivation self control will power they're not meant to last longer than like the sweet is in front of you you can eat it and then it's still there in front of you for like 30 minutes and then in a day you're going to take care of the sweet <laughs> no no that that is really good because uh, it is much more easily workable implementable and even say for example forward bend is not possible or backward bend is not possible on a particular day or if it is a if it is somebody who is a young woman who is suffering from dysmenorrhea which is painful menstrual cycles they can also just uh, do equal breathing equal yeah. breathing is equal counts of inhaling and equal counts of exhaling or they could do a very general practice like anulom vilom so it does not need to be fancy but you need to do yeah. something every day and that is that is the point here and when you were talking about um, i wanted to uh, make one point when you were talking about doing too much when i spoke about vairagya it also means acceptance of how much you can do mm. not yeah. getting attached in in the way that okay i have to reach that and yeah. i have to break my body but reach there yes here they call it because that 
that is going to cause injuries and that is uh, an attachment to that extreme attachment that i have to i have yes that extreme attachment i my cousin um uh, manoj he's very good in business founder ceo of his company international and all that stuff for him it's called killer killer instinct right in business you need that killer instinct so of course he's becoming more and more spiritual but that killer instinct to by uh, to become so determined that you're going to do this is actually working against us if we can be more and more towards um i forget the actual english word um there is this there is this that yogi quality of um sthita pragnatam you know like yes you're you're going towards something but there is this active acceptance that i am not there right now but i am on the path that's more uh satisfying to me that's more giving me the contentment than that i'm not there so i'm going to work so hard so yeah i want to make that subtle distinction because i think it's really lost in the regular community yes. yeah the approximate english word is equanimity equanimity yeah yeah whenever they talk about dharma raja in english context that's what, that's what they use equanimity yeah equanimity <clears throat> and of course we're not we I mean we're eating uh you know spices and salt and of course we're going to have emotions and uh udukaraktam you know the the blood that boils and all that stuff so we're not yogis here but it's that we know where is this um we know that the breath awareness that the becoming that's calm in a storm is actually going to help us attain um, our results faster than uh, being yes, yes. yeah so um that it i would love to hear um let's see what others we have and for hypothyroid i know we have that too here so what would you suggest for hypothyroid hypothyroidism one um, again um anything that pressurizes the neck yeah. where again sarvangasan halasan if somebody can do is is a good uh, exercise but if it is not possible to sar do sarvangasan halasan one good one another good uh, asana is simhasana where you have to protrude your tongue and you have to roar like a lion or a lioness okay so and simhasana i know that also good, good for facial beauty right yes because it yeah. exercises the muscles around the face also yeah except we don't want to do it in front of everybody <laughs> yeah, do it in your uh, bedroom or somewhere so but so, it is a very good uh, asana Do do you need to produce the sound when you do that, or just to stretch to make the face no, like? No, you have to. You sound. have to make yeah. that sound. Oh, you have to roar. Okay. You have to like roar, Narayana. Sound, sound that comes from throat. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It has to be a roar, a full fledged roar. Full fledged roar. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. So you can't do it when your wife is sleeping. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You I have to be mindful of the surroundings when you do it. <laughs> yeah. So for hypothyroid, you said Simhasana, and what else? Anything I, that I prevents, right? Um, this is uh, the neck. Even Ujjayi should be good because Ujjayi again works on the muscles out here. Yeah. Anything yeah. that uh, we can twist and do this, right? Even even if you if you are doing say for example pavan muktasana and lifting your neck up to go towards the knee, that is yeah. another thing that you do. Yeah. And um, what about the diet? I've heard about this. Cruciferous vegetables are not good for hypothyroid. Is that like can it be once in a while? Because once there's a time. once in a while is okay once right? in a while is okay. yeah yeah because there is sorry yeah is once in a while like once a week yeah once a week or once in two 10 days 
that should be okay but then you should not have like all cruciferous vegetables one day in a week you should have one cruciferous vegetable in one week okay yeah okay okay um because there's also signs that they are very powerful in preventing cancerous um activity yeah. in the body so to completely eliminate that just because of hypothyroid i didn't understand i i think having it in a moderate amount once in a while is okay okay and also what about the night shades like i've heard from mom and in uh, Siddha Samadhi Yoga, that brinjal and uh, eggplant, some things that are born in creepers and at nighttime, they are negative pranic shakti. They do say that. Uh, so um, maybe I, I am not. I'm not very. Um, uh, somebody who who can uh, guide you guide. Too yes. much into the nitty gritties of this, but I think uh, better to have it in More the part of the day where it's easier to uh, metabolize it and digest it rather than to keep it towards the later uh, part of the day. Okay, and uh, um, Dr. Bhairavi, what about asthma? So, if we are having breathing troubles and it's not related to say the weather or allergy, but it's something. What can we do? So one of the uh, important causes is uh, emotions, asthma. Mm. Emotions also do cause asthma uh, that I have seen. Uh, I mean, there has been a lot of emotional uh, correlation with the emotions and asthma. Now, asthma as per, as per the yogic philosophy and as per the dosha philosophy is more of kapha dosha. Kapha, okay. So, so kapha dosha means it's water and earth so they need to improve the uh, fire element in the body to reduce the kapha dosha so kapalabhati is really good right kapalabhati is good agnisar is good uh, agnisar is one uh, where we just close the right nostril or no, no that is done standing halfway leaning uh, leaning forward halfway and standing and then uh, you have to breathe forcefully breathe in like the, the but standing a sort of sort of okay but it is exactly kapal bhati it has to be uh, uh, you know it has to be it this this epigastrium you, you should first do a udyan bandha and then try to move the stomach Okay, Udyan Bandha is um is uh not the three Bandha but the stomach stomach stomach. So you have to try and close that sphincter and then move your abdomen. Udyan Bandha and Mula Bandha and then do it. So this is more like if I hold it, if I hold it, it's like like that. Yeah, I can't see you. I can't see you, but oh, yeah. yeah, when you hold, when you when you are trying to hold your like hold your breath outside, yeah, exhale and then you don't breathe. You exhale, you don't breathe, but move the abdomen. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And uh, what about diet? Yeah. Uh, and yeah, please go ahead. Asthma again, they say that the diet switch increases the kapha dosha. Uh, I think you so have they to say repeat that, Dr. Bhairavi. Yeah. So, uh, so any diet which increases the kapha dosha, they, uh, they tell to avoid. So dairy, no dairy. No dairy, uh, not too much of sugar. Okay. And add something like ginger or something to it. Add ginger. So um, yeah. whatever increases phlegm, don't take. Don't take. Yeah. So maybe is what cold is. stuff, right? Yeah, cold stuff. Warm kashayas with the ginger. And yeah. warm 
cooked soups, warm cooked vegetables, yes. no and no dairy. Yeah. And probably no spicy food or or what about like the spicy, spicy like, like naturally spicy food like ginger in some amounts is okay. allowed. Pepper, black pepper, okay. Black pepper is allowed. Okay. Perfect. But in moderate quantities, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, uh, and asthma, uh, again, lung opening asanas are good. Uh, so, Bhujanga asana, Dhanura asana. Okay, so the snake one and the bow one, okay. Perfect. Because they open up, back bendings are good, basically. Okay. Back bending asanas. Back bending. Camel pose. Ah, okay. So anything that's like expanding. Opening your lungs. Opening, yeah. Um, actually, going back to the the gallbladder, if it's removed, is there anything else people need to take care of if it's it's now your... So, again, diet-wise... Uh, not of too much not too much of uh, fatty food not too much of uh, do not have too much of food which you cannot digest so have more simple food so not too um, rich not too rich yes and what about too much of carbs is also not good or? not too much of carbs medium and even if you are having carbs the carbs that you should have should be complex carbs so then what about idli and dosa is it just for the weekend then so idli dosa uh, can be had uh, they suggest that instead of using rice you can use jawar or bajra or ragi so so increase those. its nutritional richness yeah you can add you can add some vegetables to it. You can add more dals to it. Yeah. And um, I know we covered gallstones. Did we have um, asanas for it, Dr. Bhairavi? For gallbladder in particular, I would not. Um... So it's more about healthy diet and exercise. Diet. Yeah. And all the asanas which should work on the abdominal region, like say Pavan Muktasana, very simple asana, yeah. or twisting to the side, side twisting, sideways twisting. So basically, should anything that good. moving uh, the midriff. Yes. Okay. I think what because you mentioned. Gallbladder is very intimately connected to the liver. Liver. It is an extension of a liver. It just stores what liver produces. So mm. for the gallbladder to be good, the liver has to be good. And liver is the place where everything happens. Everything it's happens. Like a, yeah. So liver health, again, everything related to abdomen. So, so as Ayurveda says, if your stomach is good, everything is good. If your yeah. digestive system, not stomach, but digestive system is good, everything is good. Yes, I remember going to Ayurveda doctor with my mom. And I would love whatever, whenever my mom took, he would give something that's full of uh, rose things. And then he would say, uh, Bedi, like detox is the number one thing he starts with before even addressing the problem because gut is like, I know now the science says gut is the second brain. Yes. Uh, the brain fog is related to, you know, gut imbalances. So what, uh, so you were saying for gallbladder, it's lifestyle diet and not too much fat, um, healthy diet, mm -hmm. uh, not too many carbs. And for me, the intermittent fasting, the fasting from sunset to sunrise is crucial in helping the liver uh, recoup because I know liver is also something that can regenerate itself, right? Yes. Yeah. And um, are there, do you recommend like ginger or ashwagandha, anything like that for the gallbladder stones? Uh, I wouldn't know. I'm not an Ayurvedic expert. You're not into Ayurveda. Okay. Yeah. 
So I love uh, I love how um, you you gave us um, the covering and the soul of asanas because we need both of that instead of just doing because we're doing um, we're doing yoga kind of thing. So I really appreciate your time, Dr. Bhairavi. I know it's late for you. I want to know. I want us all of us to come on the video and um, you know share what you learned or express whatever you feel right now because i can't express enough gratitude for um for what you've given us it's a beautiful gift yeah thank you dr katari and Bhairavi katari it's really really um you know like helpful for me at least uh, knowing what to be done for different things and also taking time to talk to us about the food things right like sometimes we subtly um eat without knowing the uh, full overview of like how it works and all so we appreciate your time and uh, um, helping you. us out my pleasure thank you Bhairavi Garu for um, elaborating on all the health issues that we are facing today most of them are related to our lifestyle and you know uh, one more thing I was talking about uh, the breath. Once we bring our consciousness back to the breath, most of the times, you know, um, we can even um, say, for example, I'm I'm craving a certain thing uh, and I want to eat it. I can delay that gratification by just focusing on the breath. So it, it just it is just a thing that will help you shift it will help you come in the moment, like you said, like Sheetal said. It will bring you back to the moment, to the now. It will ground you in the now. Yes. and uh, That's a great it, thing that I need. Yes, all okay. you have to do is look at his feet. You know, really, because actually <clears throat> the science is that when we do slow our breath, when we do deep breath, it separates us from our emotion. The need to eat a sweet or crave a carb is actually deep. It's coming from a certain imbalance that we can't address. So we're like, want to put a bandaid on it and satisfy it in that instant gratification, you know? So the delayed gratification is like, you, we just have to put slowly and slowly build the muscle. I mean, just because we're doing it today doesn't mean it's going to work right away. But it's a muscle too, just like a muscle. And the more we can put breath between our emotions and uh, the object of temptation, it slowly becomes where, you know, um, people will be commenting and they'll say, what, you got these chocolates from France and they're still here. But I have my things. I, I love Indian stuff more than uh, street. So we all have our journey. But yes, I agree. Deepa, would you like to say something? You're muted, Deepa. Thanks, Sheetal. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Bhairavi. You know, I'm, I'm super grateful for your time today. And I think it's it's quite insightful. You know, I've done yoga, but I've never related um, the names of the yoga and also like, you know, the direct impact that conscious awareness was never there. But even now, like a lot of the names that you have said, probably I'll have to check back with Sheetal on yeah. like what, I've you know, the demo session for us to kind of show because I'm not completely aware of all the asanas being referred but again like you know I have done it as part of my stretches but not really being mindful about it so, but breathing you know that's something that you know I really uh, value all the time and that's something that I consciously incorporate like even before presentation Ashita was telling like you feel agitated it shows in your breath water and breathing like two things I think you know before my presentation I always tend to do this 15 minute quick breathe and then go but now learning all these extra tools I think um, it's really helpful and in my case I I, ha I don't have gallbladder starting my 25 years um, I lost uh, my gallbladder was removed so I think that question was also very relevant for me personally because just knowing like what to avoid or like you know what to be mindful about yeah thank you so much um, thank you so much. Uh, also, um, I appreciated all the, the hypothyroid asanas. Uh, we only got a name of this, the, uh, the Singh asana, I think. 
Um, can you repeat the other ones or? I have it. I have it noted. You got and it. Recorded, okay. so. Perfect. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Pairavi. Yes, and uh, I can see that. So for me, it's not about we have a checklist of we're doing good things. It's about who we are because we did this. Who am I after meditation? Who am I after prayer? Who am I because I'm a yoga instructor? Who am I because I am, you know, living this, right? So I can see that, you know, I just asked mom last night and in the morning I checked and mom was like, I'll, uh, like she was in uh, OP, and she was busy and this is, and she was with a friend afterwards. So I was like, it's going to be casual. I'll just talk to you. Would you mind? She's like, okay. And I haven't met her before. So to me, this talk of flexibility and flexibility of the body reflects in the flexibility of your spirit. And to me, that's the real spirituality. And I commend you, Dr. Bhairavi, for, um, for showing us with your example to be a good role model. Thank you so much. No problem. Yeah, I, I was happy to uh, be uh, talking to everyone also, but of course, I mean, I was doing most of the talking when people were not to be seen, but it was a, a good opportunity for me to uh, talk about what what I like or yeah. what what I mean. It's something which is now like a part of the journey, yeah. and to share it, it it is a it's a great thing to do that always. Yeah. So uh, I'm happy about that. Yeah. And my mom loves you and I can see why. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Bhairavi. I will, um, we can stay back to discuss uh, some more, uh, my, but um, I know it's bedtime for you, Dr. Bhairavi. If you have to go, that's fine too. You would want me to discuss something? Oh, no, no, I'm saying, um, um, how do you say, it? like, um, we appreciate your time, but also yeah. we're going to talk about uh, what are the problems that and challenges and wins in our group. So, mm, okay, I want to stay you back, that's have, fine, but I didn't want to take more you time. Have to call for some more time. Okay, okay, I can disconnect, right? Yeah, 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 that's what I, I didn't want to take up more time, but thank you so much. And good night. Thank yeah. you. Bye. Thank good you. night. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Seljaka was saying you have to leave Akka. You are a flight to Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, have fun. Yeah. Everybody. I will. I will be uh, doing all of that, and I am doing the Nirjala fasting as well, Sheetal, with you. So okay. I will. Break oh my God! I was until I forgot. Okay. <laughs> I okay. will break it tomorrow at the Upasana time, like around uh, 9, 11, I believe so. Yeah, I, I okay. thought it was 7 p.m., but I don't know. 7 p.m. here, 9 in California. Uh, 7 a.m., sorry, yeah. Yeah, 7 a.m., sorry. 7 a.m. in here, in uh, okay. Northeast, but on the West Coast, it's 9, 10, 9, Okay, 11. okay, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah, but please, uh, like, keep it. Listen to your more. body, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you feel chills, if you feel palpitations, if you feel anything, I want us to realize we're not crushing it. We need to be more relaxed. Yeah, agree. Body is telling us no, then yeah. So, yeah. okay. Uh, yeah. And I guess we still, yeah. I was trying to do the half an hour one speaker so we can discuss, but. <laughs> no, but this was informative though. Amazing. Especially yeah. um, on the asthma, like we all hear it, but we don't really know which ones will really make a difference, right? Yes. So that's a very good help, yeah. Yes, and that's and what... The reinforcement of, say, what you say, Sital, she also said the same thing about food discipline. <laughs> yeah. So for me, it's about renaissance, Akka. Like, we're so much caught up in the... We are Hindus, we think, and we are or Jains and um, uh, Sikh. But the thing is, the essence of the masters that started this movement, right? We miss out. Yeah. And we, like, it, yeah. Oh, Deepa is doing her chick, 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 chick. <laughs> Good job, Deepa. <laughs> okay, so that's yeah. how it works. That's yeah. actually much better than even the walking one because walking one, you'll be disturbing everybody by walking. Yeah. I like that one, actually, to be honest. You what? I really like the one that Deepa just posted. 
Okay, yeah, so I think we can talk later, Suki, uh, Sudha, on how we can, but I really wanted to know your plus and minus. Maybe, I guess, go back to WhatsApp group then. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Akka. Bye. So, Deepa, do you want to share real quick, or we were going to Sudha's plus and minus and Sukinder's? Yeah, we'll go to hers and then come back to me. I just made a quick list of mine because, you know, that okay. way I remember everything. I'll go get to the list. Yeah. Okay, so Sudha, if we can come back to you, it's uh, water, you're doing good, you reduced portions, that's incredible, that's my problem. Like I was doing 900 calories of smoothie. I mean, talk about portions, I love, like I put three cups of uh, spinach in the thing and then I have three glasses and I have to drink and I'm like bloated, it's like, I had to realize like, calm down, your body frame is small. Uh, my hands are big when I serve as you've seen most of my things I, I have a big spread and my point is not to save food for the next day but then I don't have that many eaters here so I, I am learning to like reduce it so small that my head it's uh, very difficult for me so I get the portion size um, and your breakfast is better you're doing six phase which is incredible this is where everything starts with you know like I said vision edits his everything to his silva which is what he's condensing you know he's taking many different things like radical forgiveness from buddhism to um um yeah abraham hicks that emotional scale where you are dreamy about your three years from where you are and to come down to what is how is it going to reflect so yes um and you need to start my 10 gratitude list as well Okay, great job. I still need to write the three-year letter. Um, if you can't write it right away, also think of imagining it. Like, you know, when you're going to bed. Like, uh, last night I was like, I'm so proud of you. Like, I ran for the first time 4K and uh, I don't like running. And I found it, I tricked my way into a place where I'm teaching mother and I have a flat treadmill that is so convenient in the bed that's in the nice day. yeah it's a flat good luck on his test too <laughs> yeah it's postponed it tomorrow because he's a bit uh he's a bit yeah anyway it's postponed uh but yeah so you're doing the 10 list of gratitude every day what else is good i think that's all oh uh, in the evening i'm uh, i, I skip to... i'm skipping my dinner to eat only Yogurt and uh, with chia seeds and fruit. Oh, and okay, I had true. only food. Okay, great. So you're doing the intermittent fasting. Uh, how many hours? I would say from eight to eight in the morning. So it's still 12. 12. So I want you to uh, slowly to 12.3, 12.5 like that and post it because we will be waiting for those numbers. Because um, from what I heard, from what science says that Ranan shared is that incredible benefits are happening. The body fat melting is happening at 14 and then at 16. So if we can keep that as a goal, uh, but again, pushing means we're not working out. Yeah, because um, I was staying late until one o'clock, so. And I feel guilty about that. I know, I know. Um, but I'm like when you are saying about that curbing that craving thing, I need to implement that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> like even when we are eating, right? I want us to take a few breads, like three breads, four breads, increase as much as we can and then eat. And then yes, that portion. instead of two laddus, maybe we'll eat one laddu. Maybe it'll become half a laddu. But I'm not gonna, I'm not against, I'm not at all for no matter what, don't touch it. Because it's not gonna work. Yeah. Today so, I curbed that craving. Like I had to come at 7.30 to the store. I felt so disappointed because I didn't had enough sleep. Yeah. It's disturbing my morning routine, everything. And I was like going towards that suite as soon as I come in into the store. And then I looked at it for a few minutes and then I kept it back. 
Amazing. That's huge, right? That's yeah. what I did with your request. I was like, I gave commitment to not eating sweets. So I was like, okay, after thinking for a couple of minutes, I kept it back. Yes, amazing. That's a huge, that's humongous. Oh, and thank you, Deepaka. Yeah, 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 I'm yeah. not doing that many things as you guys do, but at least I'm trying a little bit in there. Okay, so I'm like a teacher. You can't say that at all. Like we are all on a different race. And like I said about the Sadhguru's joke, you know, we, we got drunk in the previous party and we came to this party. So you can't be like comparing. <laughs> exactly. Like, you know, if I pick up the sweet, I'll eat it. There's no putting it back. No. So that's yeah. hard. <laughs> and I'll show you what I'm fighting the temptation with. What is it? Um, I was trying to reverse my camera. Yeah. Maybe not in Zoom. I don't know if you can do it. Um, okay. There you go. What is it? So that's that one. Honey? What is it? I can't see. It's uh, out of yeah. I don't know. It's a candy store. I am like, she can get anything she wants. <laughs> yeah, that's the most temptation, right? And But uh, luckily for me, um, I don't eat too much of sweety stuff, sweet, like too sugary stuff. And um, the main temptation is for me is this chocolates. Oh. Which I, um, which I stopped. Good job. Very good job. So I don't want to hear like, I'm not there where you guys are because if we are ahead, I want you to realize that we are part of you. A part of you is ahead. That means you are also going to be ahead. So we all are learning from each other. Um, yeah, I know. <laughs> so clean that we're going to be like, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, take me. She's in Michigan, right? Did you say no? No, she's not in Michigan. She used to be. Oh, she's not in Michigan. Oh my God. Okay. never mind. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so, so it's your movement, it's your weights and it's your morning smoothie, right? So what about having something like what Deepa is showing us? That I have. That uh, I use it um, during my evening work from home. Work from home. You can have it in the store? No, store it doesn't work <laughs> because I'm always on my feet. Um, so. But if you're always on your feet, why can't you use that for walking? You're not just standing, right? You're walking. Do you have a pedometer? No. I walk uh, all the time. Oh, I lift so uh, boxes. Saying... I walk all the time. Wait, then why did It's you... not like 30 minutes like you mentioned and 20 minutes and 20 minutes like that. Okay, so that's more for people who are sitting a lot. If you look at um, natural, you know, people in a village setting that blue zones and all that stuff, they're moving throughout the day. So I want you so do you calculate your steps? No, I haven't, but I'm planning oh, please, to. Please, please get a, uh, I don't know if your phone is on you. Yeah, I have the Apple Watch too. Oh, okay. Yes. You're moving whole day and you have a watch and please, uh, if you're wearing it all the time, just share your steps and we'll, oh, you don't wear it. Okay. So, <laughs> what, <laughs> I will. so what will help you calculate your steps? Because I think Sometimes we're guilty and sometimes uh, we're guilty for the wrong reason. <laughs> You're moving whole day. The 30 all day in the sense of well, I'm in the store all day until like 3.30, 4 o'clock, I'll be moving yeah. and then I'll be sitting. So it's like half day this and half day that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I want you to feel like, okay, great. I have a job where I can actually walk. So you're, comp you're unlike us, Unlike most of the people here, you don't need to separate walking from your work. They need to get out and walk and come back and sit at the computer, right? So please, either you put your Apple Watch or find a $10 chronometer that I have, something or your phone that will calculate your steps. So I would like, I would like you to start um, uh, that awareness that you're walking. And to have gratitude that you're walking uh, while working. And for weights, 
um, when you are for sure walking, you could start even with ankle weights. And when you're standing, to have simple ones that I can find simple ones on Amazon for you if you don't have any weights, you know, just basic routine, very basic routine. Yes, Sukinda. Uh, can you use the gulab jamun dabba as weight to keep them next to you? And <laughs> That's what if I was you going want to eat do. them, just do that. Yeah, no. yeah. That's and you what will get I was so tired of looking at them, Sukinda. you're not going to eat them. Yeah, do it. Yeah, I just don't take it close to your mouth though. No, I don't eat. Keep it close. So any I, I love gulab jamun. <laughs> That's too sweet for me. Anytime anybody walks into the store, she'll be like two turdals, four kg. <laughs> don't tell me to do for with eight pounds. So I don't. can't. Live. Oh, so it's, how many pounds can you do? Because I have this shoulder problem, the right shoulder. Um, I could try with uh, two pounds maybe, and two then pounds. slowly increase. Yeah, so I, I made that little video for you and I have, in fact, if you use those three videos, one with Kesha, one with Reme and one with me and use, because for me, I don't want us thinking like there's this huge class that's going to start. There is something, no, it's all in like the baby steps. If yeah. I can do a baby step, that's actually, uh, you know, that uh, Yuri Gagarin, who said that? One step for mankind one small step for me is like a huge step for mankind i want us to go there as in like uh, the seed is inside you know inside a seed is that huge uh, banyan tree so every step matters so i want you to realize you're this powerful being that 10 reps of something with two pounds you know uh, basic stuff that i showed you let's even start with here or um, like the yoga i showed you just the basic stuff, because you can like lie down on the store and do things. Sure. <laughs> I'll like, do that. Last time we were there, she was doing with uh, gulab jamun dabba. Next thing she was doing with two of them. Next thing she's on the floor doing some yoga. Yeah, we don't want for interesting stories, but please, um, and for smoothie, if you think if it's think if you think it's too much effort in the morning, add fruit, add berries. When I say fruit, it's not mangoes and tropical fruits that are very fruity, that are too sugary. Please add berries, avocado, and protein. So how is your protein? Yeah, we didn't talk about that. You're adding protein, Suda? I don't have extra one. Uh, I'll try to include the pea protein that you have said. But other than that, I don't have too much. Okay, so please add pea protein gently. Like start with one scoop one day and then see how your stomach is because suddenly adding too much protein can uh, cause issues in the stomach. Okay, and good job on the early dinner. Good job on... Um, not having grains in the night. Okay, Deepa or Sukin there, whoever wants to go next. I can go. Yeah, Sukita. Is it okay? Yeah, one second, Madhav, I want you to start writing. For me, no, I, I just made a list so that I don't forget. Um, water is almost increased to two liters or more. Great job. Just which is took a you know took a while but you know it's there and food um i think the timing i've stretched it by intermittent fasting by 12 and a half hours um i am yet to still start 13 but 12 and a half has been consistent uh, at least for the past three days yeah since the last book um and um yeah i've dropped grains for the past three days and i feel absolutely fine um hey. and then the dinner so but i still i if i noticed i still kind of around 3 three thirty ish that was probably the last snack or whatever i had with the grains uh, but i don't snack that's another thing so uh, yeah i ne i never like snacking so i only eat meals and that's it so and the vitamins for the past 3 days yes d d and k whatever that was whatever okay. has arrived 
I've been taking that. The D, yeah. Yeah, and B, B complex. Um, fruit, I was not intentional earlier. So at least now I'm doing at least one fruit a day. Maybe it's an apple or an apple. you know or a banana just in the morning in between breakfast and lunch okay it's best when you are not completely full so when you are semi hungry or something yeah. yeah not with food um and sleep you know that is fine and um stretches i've included for the past 3 days i've been doing yoga very nice and heightened awareness actually has come in so i decided you know if i'm going to drink water i want to be mindful of enjoying the water so i actually decided to take a best cup possible yeah. so joy like you know it's a wine cup but you know yeah. i just like you know it's special so yes. my water is always special now so i just make it sure it feels special yes yeah that's, yeah. A, that's a good way of saying it like feeling special feeling uh prosperous feeling abundant it's so important yeah grateful because i I've, i've been to egypt and i realized what is such a huge challenge there just being mindful that you know i can just take it out of the tap and drink and you know i just i i do feel grateful in that sense which uh, has probably faded away since uh, we moved from india so that is helpful and then movement as you know uh, as was told i i'm not aware of it because i never wear pedometer i've never worn um so maybe i should have i should do it because i'm assuming i'm probably doing 5k i don't know so mm-hmm. it may be um i have no idea so, so let's get a nice simple because i will have another pedometer that i don't like too many mod- modes in yeah i just simple one that shows your and your movement i think that's it yeah and so deeper features of the do i still get a fitbit um or a, or a ring or something because then you get more for it Actually, because then you'll be carrying an extra thing, right? Now, Fitbit will be your phone. It'll be your steps. It'll be your, you know what I love? It reminds you when you're getting your periods. It keeps a chunk ch- in your calories, it, your burnout, this, this your Apple? breathing. Well, it's a Fitbit, but it is just like an Apple Watch, and it syncs with your phone. When you're somebody's calling you on the phone, it's ringing. Uh, when you're getting texts on your phone, it's it's you showing up messages. but it's a little cheaper than the apple watch so if you you know if you're on a budget or something and the one i have is the versa it looks exactly like a apple watch so sometimes people think oh is that an apple watch and i'm like no it's just a fitbit um mm-hmm. you know and it's amazing um a the way thing in there so my only reason why i have not got those i have like a regular watch is because i i i'm already constantly checking my phone for emails messages and i, I didn't w- want that that's why that's one way to cut that uh, you know that trigger every time i want to look at my like uh-huh. just to look at the time i had to carry my phone i'm like i don't want to carry my phone every single time i walk over there mm-hmm. so just like if you wear a watch already and you, again i think that's one thing we should also try to limit uh, at least personally you know this urge to constantly be looking at these distractions and notifications we should only keep something that is super critical right as moms yes we want to make sure nothing showing up from our kids mm-hmm. that's our um call or a text and that will show up on your watch okay, okay. the rest your emails your your work texts you should not even look at them on your um, oh both of them yeah that was my thing too deepa is in like I didn't want it on me all the time, but Sukinder is also saying like you know, it's like uh, the other day I forgot my phone and I loved the walk like anything. There was like nothing. I didn't know how many steps, but I was like, there were swans. There were like, it was very spiritual. <laughs> yeah, when I'm home, I sometimes miss my I I don't miss my phone. I end up left it somewhere and I don't even know where it is. Is it in the car? Is it somewhere else? Like you know, because yeah, I think I that. that. probably now it makes sense for me because i thought i'm going to be even more addicted you know i thought like it's going to add on more to my screen time um i didn't think of it like you know it's actually going to help me reduce my uh, my like, use so you can um, customize what is it that you see okay because yeah. sometimes work is important too like uh, if you are on call okay so where can uh, where do you think you can get better because oh the other thing with fasting is that for 
um, when we are in period, right after period is when we can go up to 16 hours, like not pushing, but that's the follicular phase. And then there's ovulation. After ovulation, the body craves more food. So we are not supposed to starve up until 16. So if it's 14, that's fine. So, so see this, so the Fitbit even tells you like which phase of your cycle you are in. Like, I didn't know that before I got this watch, um, what she's saying, for example. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to, I'm, I can do 15 hours most days, but I haven't been able to do 16 very often yet. So yeah. That's fine. That's fine. Actually for uh, women, like we need to listen. And uh, yeah. Um, so Deepa, I'm glad. I you have, you know, made a note that I, I still have to work is I have not started weights, uh, protein powder. And uh, I'm yet to buy that. I just saw what it is. And Veda's stopped me by from buying in Amazon because he said he can actually go and he can buy it from Walmart or Costco. So I'm just waiting on that. And gratitude journal, I have not written and I have not written the letters. Um, yeah, and the, and the tracking of my steps. So these are the things that I'm yet to add on. Okay, so how do you think you can start tracking your steps? I, I Even though if it's a Fitbit, maybe a big purchase like that. Uh, we have an old pedometer. I just need to find where right away, like today or tomorrow, I, I should be able to locate it because it's it's it was brought in Walgreens, like it was a good one. Um, so I just need to change the battery and see if I can get that started at least. Yeah. Yeah. So my thing is that when you again using our breath to before we buy a purchase, before we buy something, right? It's a very good thing. Because um yeah, we feel like when we buy something, we bought the result. But we're actually buying the product and it won't work unless we you put it to good use, right? So um, with the steps, if you can get your old one working, you're actually more invested in it than if you go out and buy right now. Even though Fitbit sounds really good, maybe it's in the future. But I want you to like not react and buy it, but then really put some breath between you and the Fitbit and see if it's like Sudha's, um, you know, sweet. Uh, another thing is that, like Sukinder was saying, I had no idea in the past, like many years ago, I didn't know. My period would always be like, oh, surprise. And my auntie's like, you got three kids and you still don't know. Like, yeah, when it's came here with me even now, Sheetal. Exactly. I was there. And for me, um, I I didn't know uh, the differences. And I would be like, oh, and then suddenly I need help. And then I would use their diapers. <laughs> to, uh, and my auntie would always like, how do you not know? Like, does your body not tell you? I'm like, he's telling me? Like, what is it telling me? <laughs> and then the more I was talking to like holistic people, and the more I'm in this group or not this group, I meant like in the awareness, right? Like we have like one time it's on the left lower and the other month it's on the right lower. Like we have like sharp things that, uh, that whether it's ovulation or whether it's like you can actually, so the more you're into breath, the more you're into body, you realize that. And when we react to people at work or at home, we know the more we're closer to the period, we're like, when we don't know that we're closer to the period, we're like this Kali coming out and we don't know why. We're thinking you're so wrong that this is why this is happening. And the clarity for me becomes intense, like towards the period. Like I can just see, it. but that also means compassion could go out the window. Like I could become very correct, but very not kind. You know, so the more I am investing in myself, as in like, then I realize like, okay, it looks like this person is really wrong, but I'm also going inching towards my hormones are such a way that I'm like unable to be kind in a way that I'm not seeing the big picture right now. It, but right now it feels like you're very wrong and it's unfair. What's happening is unfair. So that unfairness, that Kali, who's going to make sure everything is fine, all of that builds up in us towards the period. So I don't believe in the controversial topic of we are same as men. We are, we are, we are better and weaker and same in every way, but we, have, we are a different creature. We are creators. Um, they are something else. They're supporters and providers and all that stuff, but 
for me, that femininity doesn't mean it's weak, but we are aware of that. So yeah, to be aware and to not force, and I was forcing fasting during the time that my body was craving and that would delay the periods. And I was like, what's going on? And then when I studied it and I talked to Ronan, he told me, he said, uh, you need to give into your body more. And Benoit was like so happy. He was also there in Paris. I was talking to Ronan because I said, how come he gets to eat sweets <clears throat> and still is healthy? And he was like, but we eat only this much. Like we do it at the end of a meal and it completes a meal for them. So when they have no, when I have no sweets, he'll have sh um, yogurt and some dessert mixed and he enjoys it and it's this much. But for me, you put like Indian stuff in front of me and I go to this buffet. I'm not the, I'm the one that's eating the last. I would start beginning and then everybody would talk and talk and I would use the kids as an excuse, but I will... I will be the last one still eating and my plate will still be good when everybody is done. So I get that. And um, steps, please uh, get your thing fixed. And protein powder, Costco has it. But if you want to go cheaper, I went cheaper because for me, three of us are taking it. So I bought this huge thing because when I calculated Costco, I used to buy Costco during uh, COVID time and stuff. It's very tasty and it's really nice, the organ, but um, it, it adds up really fast. Like that one little dabba is for one person for one month. So I'm like having $100 for just four of us. I didn't want it. So when we researched, Keisha found this one where it's completely pure pea protein and nothing. If I want, and to me, it tastes like water. So I don't need sweet. So I always tell myself and I tease kids too. Did America make you soft? Do we need sweet for everything? You know, can we drink something that's plain? And it's, so when I have that awareness, gratitude, like this is causing, you know, my body, my brain, my hair and everything, like, thank you so much. I don't care for sweet. So yeah, that's a huge one. If you want that, I can send the link again, but please look at the ingredients. We just want pea protein and nothing else. I mean, if they have monk fruit, that, this, fine. I don't want to, this is my thing. I don't want it to be so harsh on you guys that you're like, so maybe you need the sweet initially. Because I used to make smoothies that made my kids run away, but I'd still get them to drink too until I, I, I made it kinder and kinder and kinder where I have to think, okay, these are kids. So they, has, they still have a lot of uh, taste buds. <laughs> And so protein powder, yes, please. And then weights, you were going to do your mom's ankle weights or something. What happened? Yeah, I have it. I tried it. It was not comfortable. So, okay. <laughs> so I thought, let me just start off with stretches every day. So I started off with stretches every day. Um, so I'll be adding it this coming week. I'll be adding it. And I was told that, you know, there is also something with the wrist weight. You told, right? You know, so I don't know. I have yet to buy the dumbbells. So... Anyway, one trip is due. Um, I'll probably just go so and check. If, if we have that resistance for resistance, right? What you can do is, yeah, to have that two, three pounds, maximum three pounds, that's all, that you can use when you're walking. And I want us to realize that walking is better than work, working out. Walking is the must. If you can do 7K, if you can increase it as much as you can to 10K, I need you to realize that that's uh, that's what that's what these indigenous people are doing. They're walking, 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 walking. So walking is better. And if you can put those, you know, maybe that's best. That's all you can do. That's fine. No. You're mixing weights with the walking, and then gratitude and letter. If you can do it, you can even uh, you know when you're driving, you're like ten things I'm grateful for this morning. When you're going to bed, ten things I'm grateful for today, and and feel when uh, the the oh I I do it mentally though the six days yeah, yeah. no I I do that in the morning you know and I think of those three or five things that I'm grateful even though he says three I pretty much run through the list like you know I don't know like you know three 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 professionally three personally and three something else yeah, yeah. okay yeah something like that yeah so very nice um oh Madhva I need a charger um. Sukhinder, is there anything else, Deepa, that you want to make it better? No. No. <laughs> okay, Sukhinder. 
yes, yes. So I am. Um, so I, I think my wins are just like cutting down on my eating. Like I said, I've been able to do a 15-hour um, intermittent fasting. I try to stick to that most days of the week, and try to aim for one 16-hour day. So that means I usually eat by five, between five and six, but sometimes it's between six and seven. Um, and I try to eat twice, so, but I just have a caffeine addiction. So I just um, drink chai or coffee in the middle um, and maybe some nuts if I'm, if I'm feeling like I'm starving. Uh, water is good. I, um, the steps, like I said, I mean, I'm great. I mean, I'm glad that I have, I can track my steps, but there are times when I like struggle to, to make the, 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 number that we want and I know I I mean you know like I we all say that we are in this journey but every tiny improvement we can make every any day is is the goal uh gratitude what did you just say sorry say again what did you just say I missed it my steps are only up to barely five thousand a day usually you know I I, I know our goal is seven thousand at least um and on a good days it can be 10, but I'm not getting there yet. So I need to work on that. Uh, the some things I do is like at work, I have a standing desk so when I'm in the office, um, I stand and I just do like a jog, like a standing jog. So that's one thing that's what I was suggesting if Sada could do um, when she's standing, just she just keep bending her legs back, something like that. Um, and then what else? Um, yeah. There's this thing I do, and this is just my, whatever, coping mechanism probably. Um, but it's like also the thing where we were talking about uh, trying to be aware of your breath because that kind of brings you inwards when you are worried about something. Mm -hmm. So I have this thing, I just, every time I'm like worried about something or I'm something uh, worrying me, I just do like, thank you. And I feel why Guru is just like your God, right? So I say, so it's like also trying to be grateful for what I have, but then also trying to like calm myself down about if I'm worried about something. So, and I try to also keep, like you said, I mean, I'm not able to write all these things. I've only started trying to write my to-do list because that is what I fight with as well. Like there are 10 things that I need to do, but they don't get done. So then I was like, maybe let me start uh, writing them down and maybe then I can. So that is what I'm trying to work on mostly. And some of those things are, personal some of those you know personal care some of those are sorting out my closet or some of those are making something uh, you know dropping the books off donating the clothes or things like that so yeah okay. so that's actually so you're actually rocking it with intermittent fasting with the um, eating twice and you have like nutritional richness with nuts and you're doing good with water. You're doing two plus liters? Uh, definitely one in the morning and then the one is throughout the day. Is that the goal? Is it total or is that just in the morning? So, so, so the ideally is that um, one in liter the in the morning and after an hour, another the other. as much as you can. Okay. So the two liters are actually there before you're uh, when starting your breakfast kind of thing, before your coffee. Because you're going from being prone to a grape. Your body is yep. majority water. That uh, you actually need a lot of it for different reasons. So that's why we're hydrating in the morning, but the end goal is still um, the rest of the day would be like a liter, you know, if you have a juice or something, or healthy juice or smoothie or water or, or salad vegetables that are like cucumber that have water in it. So three liters is where we're going. Mm -hmm. Uh, after, okay. After yeah, no, I think I'm, I'm still working on the second liter water yet. So, okay. yeah. And yeah, so you don't want to feel like nauseous. You want to increase it a little bit, little bit. And definitely water is salt. So, what makes it easy for me for the second liter is that I will add lemon and a bit salt, and it makes it really good and slightly. Okay. We'll do that. And for steps, 
uh, if, um, when I do the treadmill and yesterday when I did it, what I did was increasing it from four uh, made me gain up so fast because I am not running, I'm not walking, I'm doing this um, like the like a, like I saw this Chinese do. And um, so I want us to increase the step frequency to where you're almost running, but it looks like you're in a rush. You'll actually get your steps really fast that way. Um, yeah, so there's another feature on the Fitbit. It reminds me that every hour I need to do 250 steps. And if I'm not done with the 250 steps for that hour, uh, so at 50, 10 minutes before the hour, a warning comes up, hey, walk. So then it's like, okay, I go and I try to make them 250. And then when I do 250, it gives me stars. <laughs> okay, done. Do you use that all the time? I sometimes listen to it. Really, it comes down to your accountability and how respectful you are of your notifications right so, it's good. It's so yeah good. sometimes i do sometimes i get up and i just walk, because there are only like 50 steps left and i walk a little bit and they're done and they'll like what's the goal on the bit? is it like 70 oh. or? so it's 250 per hour but the my goal that i've set is 10,000 for myself but it's 250 per hour so if i do 250 per hour it gives me a an award for staying active if i'm active every hour it tells you, oh, active for eight hours. Like on the weekends when I'm doing vacuum and all that, I get pretty much uh, many accolades from my watch. <laughs> yeah, you know, like that's so it's sweet. Boot. It's like Sukinder so, so and her friend. Um, <laughs> that's so cute. So, but even with all that help, you're saying you're averaging five thousand. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, I think so, close to that, okay. yeah. So what you can do is, yes, use definitely the watch, but at the same time, increase your step rate. Like if it's doing 250, make it 350 because you may skip out in the evening, yeah. right? Like increase, see where you are more active and increase your step count there because you know you're going to skip it once the kids come or something like that. And uh, about writing, right? The, this is so interesting. I'm so glad you mentioned it. So to-do lists cause anxiety. When you look at them. Oh, oh my God. Like there's a video of Vision on YouTube that says I'm done with to-do list. So what, what did you say again? To-do list what? Is uh, causes anxiety. Oh, I see. Okay. Because the minute you look at it, it's what's not done. So our focus is constantly on what is working in our life if five things are happening in our life and one thing is the only one that's working all four are not working we're focusing on this this is how we are getting the grit to do all these four so the concept itself the mindset is wrong when the we um look at something oh my god like i didn't do it i didn't do it i didn't do it so in the emotional scale we are like hopeless powerless, guilty, frustrated, disappointed, and uh, right, we're here. And if you look at the manifest, the, um, the emotional scale I, I showed you, manifestation is happening here. To, for us to be relaxed, content, to be hopeful, to be joyful, to be um, enthusiastic, energetic, joyful, right? This is where things are happening for us. To-do list, if it's going to keep you here, and the looking at it is uh, uh, increasing your cortisol, it's not helping. So we need to realize like with the yoga and the funda and all that stuff, right? Um, we will have unfinished tasks all the time. Imagine staying here the rest of your life. That golden bridge is, um, they're starting the painting January 1st and ending the painting December 31st. And then again, they start again. It's never finished. We, our life is like that. We'll always have unfinished tasks. But focusing on that, whatever you focus on grows. Whatever you focus on that's not working out is going to grow. So the it's more about gratitude. And um, gratitude is like to be dreamy, to be soft, to not have this hardcore desire. Like I'm going to donate the books and it didn't happen. It's been a month. 
we will have those feelings, but we are supposed to lift ourselves up, to soothe ourselves up. Our body needs to feel, right? It's okay. Don't rush. There's no tiger behind us. This is what I tell myself. Yeah, so that's why, yeah, exactly. You know, this is how I cope. Like as you were saying, yeah, it's okay. I tell myself. Yes. It's okay. So it's more like a dreamy thing, right? I love the clean closet. It feels so good. Like the feeling is first, the action will follow. And the feeling can feel like fake. It can feel like an imposter, like whatever, right? With drama. But that's where, imagine if you are a kid, right? When Imagine you're a kid. You just tell them something, they don't know how. They're just going to start dreaming. That's it. So we need to get to that stage of, and to be satisfied with what happened now. Like, you know, Parvan is doing good. And there were times in the past where were, his allergies were keeping you a little bit more uh, tense. So there's so many things. So it's not like I'm taking you from closet to Parvan, but in, in the closet, um, it, this is such a, I think we were discussing earlier with uh, Sudha and um, Seljaka, um, <clears throat> is that the trick is to soothe ourselves. If you go to your WhatsApp and then look at that uh, emotional scale I gave you, Sukinder, that to me is the key. That to me is like, to feel guilty, to feel frustration is to shoot our foot with the gun and then say, ooh, show off. She's like, smoothie, you. <laughs> Very I, cute. I was feeling hungry, actually. <laughs> I was thinking, I'm not ready to eat, but I was feeling hungry. I was like, okay, let me just put some greens in and just. Good job. Uh, yeah. Good job. And um, yeah, so do you see that, Sukinder, the, the emotional scale? I can't bring it up here, but can I you... do, I do. I was looking at that and I, yes. I, 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 I'm not, I, I know I'm, I'm, I'm not good at that scale. I just, like I, you know, again, I don't want to, I mean, I don't want to feel guilty about it, but I know that I'm not there yet. Yeah. This is so cute. This reminds me of office space where you know the big guy is like being interviewed they're checking to see everybody's position do you guys see office space in the past it's an old movie and they're like asking him what do you do he goes i'm a people's person and they keep grilling him and then he gets so upset because i'm a people person damn it like <laughs> they're like i don't want to feel guilty but i feel guilty but that's that's okay because that's where we all have to start from the guilt is the bottom most but we know that this is not place to stay. It's better to be frustrated than guilty. It's better to be angry than, uh, you know, it's better to be um, actually hopeless. Uh, what, what's the word about? I forgot, bored then. And then comes your contentment. But we, just this discussion, this conversation is enough for you to be aware next time. Like, you know what? I am a freaking cool mom doing so many things and constantly taking kids everywhere. My closet is supposed to look like this. But pretty soon, one day, you know, when the time is right, slowly by slowly, it's going to get better. I had to step over diapers for years. I was like not guilty. And if someone came, they're like, yeah, please step over the diapers because I don't know what to do. I have three kids and it's toys everywhere and stuff everywhere. And I don't know what's happening with my life. So allow that. Why do you expect it to be? Why, why do we have this comparison going like this needs to be better? Like this is where we are and to savor that moment. And this is where I was bringing in uh, Benoit's reference in the past when we were talking. Um, not to say he's perfect, but what I have learned from him, he wants me to put that disclaimer every time I use. I don't want to use too many times because but I have not seen this in our spiritual circles, in our religious circles, in our elders. There is this hurry, there is this anxiety to achieve more, to not that we're not there enough. But I see he's savoring, and I see the French uh, culture, European culture, right? I'm not saying again they have it best, but that one part where they savor. When you savor, um, you are like slow and steady wins the race. We're not like the tortoise. 
So our gratitude gratitude list should be so dreamy. Like when you look at it, like, oh my God, thank you so much for this. Like, I can't believe. Okay, so to trick your subconscious, this is what you do. What if, add what if. What if my closet was amazing? What if my kids were listening to me all the time? What if, it seems it's proven that when you put what if and you actually question yourself, your subconscious or your brain is actually open to it because now you're not, you're not, um, what's the word for it? You're not forcing it and it doesn't feel fake. So try to put what if in your to-do list. What if this will be done by this time? What if all the books are gone? And the, and and if it, and I want you to realize that whatever you write needs to feel good needs to feel and if you don't like all the to-do stuff because it does cause anxiety you can write actual things you're grateful for what is working well in your life yeah yeah so yeah that's exactly what i tell myself say again it can be tiny but that's what i want us to write because you're telling your brain that activating that reticular activation system right you're feeding it tiny good stuff you're gonna find even more good stuff when you feed it anxiety stuff you're gonna find even more anxiety stuff so it's like basic formula yeah you're right and then your other um, quote in there about the more we celebrate what we have or every tiny win the more of that comes to us right so you know that was something i had forgotten for the longest time yes Yes. In fact, it's, yeah. it's not even us, it's a society and it's like, you know, advertisements, you're not there, someone else has it. So the comparison, the jealousy, the envy, or the frustration, like, so emotional guidance scale should be with us all the time to check, okay, I'm here. Okay, I'd rather get angry then, but the point is not to stay angry. The point is not to stay there, to soothe. And that's why Sada in her example, would go towards sweet because she's feeling guilty, angry, frustrated. So many things are not working out, right? I'm sorry I'm using your example, Sada, but we all have that same situation in different drama. Then, uh, you know, the sweet will take a whoop like that instantly. But then because it's sweet and it's causing all of this, it's going to come back again. So we need to find our sweets. What is it that will help us for me i cannot reason myself in the past in the house if house is messy i don't know what to do and kids are not doing something i say oh, right i run to zumba that's why i have my you know the in the western culture they call it self-dating mechanism you're not seeking escape food. also good escape yeah very good so find your sweet find your escape so that it's actually lifting you up from here instead of crashing yeah. you, right? Coffee or shopping, cravings. Any of these will help us like uh, even more. Here. Yeah, for me, uh, so that I don't know if, if you know if it's going to be applicable for me. I take a lot of, uh, you know, when I when things are, I literally take check myself out and uh, you know I go out one fine day on a weekend early in the morning I'll wake up and I go all by myself for breakfast um, I'll just take a book and go I'll just literally have conversation mm-hmm. with random people like not intentionally but you know the server or yeah. whoever comes so those kind of things and then I also go hang out in yeah. stores like for hours like you know I do a lot of such stuff like you know I just go for some community event like just literally show off and most likely you know, spend time, you know, even if I go just have a bowl of soup, I'll take one hour to just have that bowl of soup. I love it. Enjoy that. And I just, you know, literally take a book. I just don't have that luxury right now, to be honest. Yeah. So. Oh, you have a young child. Yes. Constantly, yeah. there's nobody in the house that will take over the duty. Oh, okay. Even now, I'm actually supposed to be doing start making lunch, actually. So I need to actually. Yeah, I mean, I go early in the morning. Drop off. I go at six o'clock when people are still asleep. Yeah, I don't go like when they're up. Oh, oh then they would be like, oh, where did you go? Yeah. Yeah, but that's okay. Like you send a picture of coffee shop 
bookshop. Bookshop is the well, bookshop doesn't open until 10 11. I love to hang out in bookshops. I mean, I can get lost, I can just be there. Like, oh, God. I just, but I, yeah, you can take your kids to Barnes and Noble, that's a humongous escape. They will love it too. Because but you know, they, I have I have another factor which is a which is a pull me down in my in my house. So it's 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 very different for me. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, she's got in laws. She's got. Um, um, so. Oh. so I only have you few. Weeks. Up, in there. Yeah. Oh, I. I think it's, it's, I think how all of you. Uh, you um, heard, we can it, hear you cooking there. Yeah, I sound cut off, um, but I said I have just a few wins, but having all of you uh, keep doing this, like what we started, this accountability and the sharing, I think is helping. Amazing. I love it. But um, I think. It's very nice, Sukinder, if you can list actual gratitude things, very small things, knowing oh, that- They are very small. They're like the earrings I picked up at Macy's, uh, or they are those little bangles. That, those are my grateful. They make me so happy. And my kids laugh at me. I was like, what? It's like, oh my God, Armand, these are so pretty. Uh, you know, and so those are good. And then, yeah, of course, the you know, health uh, of these these people and the family and the friends I have yeah but yeah. yeah I can do that sometimes those might be the same things every day probably it's okay right it's okay because it's about how good you feel like I love that I did I up the water or I you know I can't believe I did you know 6,000 steps like I feel good so it's that pat on the back and that's why I was saying the letter from next year to us now and like I'm so proud of you you stuck to it I'm so proud of you it's like if you were one of your kids you would be kinder to that kid you would be very very appreciative of everything that kid is doing if that kid was you right but we're actually very cruel to ourselves I want us to realize that like I didn't climb Himalayas yesterday so there's nothing to be grateful for that's how we are like it's almost like uh, the nine months okay come on you're nine months and you can't walk yet come on just keep walking <laughs> while you keep falling. That's how we treat us. Because it took decades. It took so much of a situation. It, there's so much happening, right? It's We are not just the body. There's so much history, trap, there's trauma, there's, um, there's uh, unmet needs, unmet expectations, and they're all going to show up either in shopping or eating or, you know, movies and escape some kind of escape so let's figure out what escape is healthy so that when you come back you come back a stronger mom stronger human being so mine were okay. like escaping to toastmasters and it was challenging me um once a week I was scared. I was scared to even stand in front and say, my name is Sheetal. And, and and then I was like, my heart was beating louder than what I was saying. I couldn't hear and I was sweating. And I was like, my, my lips were actually trembling. Like, blah, blah, blah. like, I'm like, what is this? I'm just sharing who I am. And there were six people. <laughs> but we use the frustrations in our life consciously with breath to become fuel to take off. So let's do that. All right, it was really nice discussion and I feel like I hope you're all satisfied with the time we spent with each other because it's always been like where um, it was not enough feeling. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we are high achieving and uh, let's yes. make our escapes high achieving too. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay, are we, I, I have to take off now. Yeah, okay, bye. I'm gonna Thank you. close the uh, bye everybody. Bye, bye Sada. Bye. Bye, bye. bye Sada.